Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Medicine. Uh, today we're going to do another video in our end title capnography waveform series. Uh, we have come out with a couple of videos on this topic, uh, so definitely check out this video's description or our page. Um, we are going to specifically be talking today about the uh, end title capnography waveform for obstruction. Uh, which will be something that will make sense if you stick with the video. So we're going to start talking about the normal, uh, and then we'll get into the obstructive uh, and tidal capnography waveform, as well as different causes for that. For those new to the, to the channel, as a friendly reminder, we are a medical education uh, YouTube channel. We also cover some medical news and current events. Uh, this is our Whiteboard Medicine homepage. Uh, if you go to playlists, we have a whole bunch of playlists on different medical topics. Uh, this will end up in the pulmonology and critical care playlist, most likely. In addition to that, we do have a Patreon page where we post all the video notes. Uh, as well as videos without commercials, and we usually post practice questions there as well. It is linked in this video's description. We'd love for you all to check it out and consider joining it and become part of our kind of whiteboard medicine Patreon community. No further ado, though, we'll quit uh, belaboring the point on that. Quick 30-second break for introduction. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's going to be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. All right, thanks for sticking around. So end title capnography waveforms. And today we're going to be talking about obstruction. So if you have not checked out our first introductory video, a lot of what we're going to be talking about is going to kind of be rooted in the foundations we discussed in that video. So we would encourage you to go to that video first and watch it, especially if this is not familiar to you, because this is a normal end title capnography waveform. But in that introduction video, we talked about what end title capnography is, the different indications for it, what contributes to it, you know, cardiac output, lung perfusion, dissolved carbon dioxide in the blood, ventilation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so kind of like the pathophys of it. And then we went through this, which is the normal, NL normal waveform. And to understand abnormal, you first have to understand normal. So check out that video first. Uh, if you did watch that video or if this is all familiar to you, uh, we look forward to having you in this video and feel free to dive in. Briefly though, just to go over the no normal waveform, this is a normal end tidal capnographic waveform, right? It's got end tidal CO2 on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. There are four different phases, starting at phase 0, 1, 2, and 3, that represent different parts of the inspiratory and expiratory cycle. It starts with inspiration, where the end tidal is at 0, because you're inspiring air in, rather than expiring air out. During expiration, the first phase is phase 1. The end tidal starts at 0 still, though, because that's the dead space, right? That's just the air that you breathed in that sits in the trachea and the oropharynx that you're then breathing out. But that air did not exchange gas. It did not get to the alveoli and exchange gas with the bloodstream. It's just in the dead space. Um, so it starts at zero. As you breathe more and more of that air out, you start to get some mixed air, which is a mix of the dead space as well as the alveolar air. So you get this huge increase, a uh, very expedient increase in the end tidal until you get to phase three, which is as you're expiring, that's when the alveolar air, the air that actually was in the alveoli that exchanged gas with the bloodstream starts. And that alveolar air through the rest of the expiratory cycle has a single carbon dioxide value typically keyword there typically um, in a normal uh, patient because that is the alveolar air and the uh, carbon dioxide dissolving into the alveoli uh, is constant throughout the lungs typically. Um, so what you get here is phase three, the alveolar air, and it peaks at this top right corner, which is the end tidal. Um, that's the measure, the number that's kicked out, right? Normal is 35 to 45. Then once you're done expiring, you start to inhale again and it immediately the end tidal carbon dioxide drops to zero for the rest of inspiration until you start to expire again and get to phase one. And then obviously the whole cycle starts over again. So this is the normal. But as we mentioned, today we're going to be talking about the abnormal, particularly obstruction. So end tidal waveforms are nice because they can give you a lot of insight into different pathophysiology going on. And this is one of the classical pathophysiologic end tidal waveforms you might see. And this waveform represents, as we mentioned, obstruction. 
And obstruction is any pathophys that's going on that causes some degree of airway obstruction. So it could be bronchospasm, where our small airways are spasming. It could be COPD or emphysema, where we have obstruction in the small airways. Uh, it could be asthma, right, which is also a form of obstruction in the small airways. It could be upper airway obstruction. It could be kinking of an endotracheal tube. Anything that leads to a degree of obstruction when we're expiring can lead to this abnormal and tidal waveform. And what it looks like is this, and it's com commonly caused, called the shark fin waveform, right? So people think this looks like a shark fin, and I suppose it actually does. But what we see here in the different phases represents different pathophysiology going on. So right, your inspiration here, and then this is when you start to expire, and you get that phase one, right? And that's that dead space. But as you get to phase two, which is the mixed air, instead of getting this abrupt, super fast increase that then goes to phase three, you get this much smaller, slower increase that then molds into phase three, which is a much more gradual increase than in a normal waveform. And what's happening is that's the manifestation of that obstruction, right? So obstruction means that the air cannot flow out freely. And whether that's because you got a big, you know, toy stuck in your throat or the ET tubes kinked, or whether those small airways are all inflamed from COPD or asthma, the air cannot leave those airways in the same kind of order and pace that normal airways can. So maybe you get some mixing, uh, sorry, and then this phase three, we already said it's the alveolar air, but um, maybe you get 50% of the lung where that air flows out um, and mixes for a prolonged period of time. Maybe you get some of the lung that has obstruction, some of the lung that has less obstruction. But this mixing phase of the dead space and the alveolar air is much more pronounced. It's much longer. It's much more gradual um, until you get to the end tidal CO2 peak here, right? So what you often get in obstructive disease is a prolonged expiratory phase and this gradual increase to the end tidal in phase three. So if we were to draw out, let's just think about why this would be. Because it's important to think about the pathophysiology of what's happening. So this is a trachea into bronchi. Here's lung one, here's lung two, okay? If we were to kind of zoom in on just a hunk of lung, and let's say that this is, I don't know, uh, COPD. Well, you get all these kind of alveoli in these batches here, but it's COPD, so you have inflammation in this airway that leads to these being delayed. And let's just say, hypothetically, it takes these five seconds to empty. And then you have some more alveoli, and there's some inflammation here, but it's a little less, so it takes these three seconds to empty. And then you have some more alveoli over here, and you know, for whatever reason, these are less affected, and it takes these one second to empty. And this is the normal. So typically, these would all take one second to empty all their air. Well, when we're breathing out, and it usually takes one second, usually when we're expiring, the dead space gets mixed. And as we go up, this mixing happens quickly until you just get the alveolar air. And this is that hypothetical one second over here of that mixed air before you get to the alveolar air. But in obstruction you have areas with obstruction that kind of empty the alveolar air more slowly. So, you know, here you have the dead space. Here it starts to be mixed air. And this mixed air persists, right? Because you get some alveoli that are emptying in one second, some that are emptying in three seconds, and the rest of them empty in five seconds until you finally get to pure alveolar air at the shark fin peak. Because again, there's obstruction. It could be asthma or there could be a toy sitting in the trachea where things are not able to get piet as quickly. So the mixing is a much more prolonged phase. And that's why you get that stereotypical shark fin with uh, obstructive disease. So this is something to watch on the end title. Let's say someone comes in and they're short of breath and your stethoscope, you're like, I think they're wheezy, I'm not sure. You put them on end title. If you see this characteristic end title waveform, you know, that's shark fin. That implies they do have some degree of obstructive lung disease or they're on a ventilator and their peak pressures are high. We've talked about peak and plateau pressures on this channel before. Check out the pulmonary playlist, it's on there. Um, and you're like, why are their peak pressures high? I don't know, maybe it's mucus. 
um, plugging, but you look at their waveform and you see the shark fin and you're like, oh, maybe it's bronchospasm because they have an obstructive uh, end tidal CO2 waveform. And you give them a bunch of duonebs, and after you give them duonebs, then their end tidal waveform gets to be this nice square waveform, which is much more normal. Their peak pressures go back down and you're a hero. So waveforms can be really helpful. The shark fin waveform is classical for obstructive lung disease. It can be a whole bunch of different stuff, um, but something to keep an eye on and something that helps you diagnostically as well as therapeutically to see if things are helping uh, when you give someone treatments like nebulizer therapies to see if the obstruction gets better. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. We're going to do a whole bunch of these videos on different kind of end tidal capnography waveform analysis. So definitely subscribe, stick around. Uh, and in any case, check out our Patreon page. Stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.